Hi guys, my name is Melissa Lamb and this is my YouTube channel, Uncovering Melissa. Um, so as you can tell by the title of this video, I do want to walk you guys through my, um, I guess my past with obesity and my goals moving forward in the bodybuilding realm. Um, I have tried recording this video probably hundreds of times and I've always got something pop up. So hopefully this is my final cut. Um, quick disclaimer, I am not a medical trained professional in any way, shape or form. Um, I am a certified personal trainer and I'm working on my nutrition certification. Um, but uh, most of the information I've learned is just from what's worked for me and uh, what I've learned from my doctors along the way this past year and the books and things that I've read and the certifications that I've got. Um, so uh, just to kind of jump right into it, uh, I've struggled with obesity most of my life. So it's most of what I've known. Um, I do remember being a normal body weight when I was very young. I really loved gymnastics in elementary school. Um, I loved soccer. I really wanted to play softball. Um, I was a very active young kid. Uh, around second grade, I did start gaining a lot of weight. My family didn't know a lot about nutrition. Um, I didn't have as many friends in my neighborhood as I used to, and it became a lot more sedentary. And um, I started putting on a lot of weight. Um, I would say I didn't really notice until my parents had to take me to like the women's section to get clothes and I couldn't wear the same clothes that my classmates were wearing. Um, but other than that, like there really wasn't a whole lot of really big kids uh, in my elementary school, not in the early 2000s, late 90s. So I felt very alone in that sense. But um, fast forward to middle school, everyone got, got picked on in middle school. Uh, I'm definitely not alone in that, but that's when the bullying really started. Um, around my weight, I got called Big Mac Girl, all kinds of goofy things. Um, I think we've all been there, done that. Middle school just kind of sucks for everyone. Uh, but uh, I started noticing health problems going into high school. Um, I struggled with exercise specifically. I tried PE for two weeks in sixth grade. They had to take me out because I was having horrible time breathing. Um, I had severe chest pains and we just thought it was due to my size. Um, didn't think anything else of it. Uh, so they just took me out, they put me in art. So in high school, fast forward, I loved band and I wanted to be a part of a high school that had a competitive marching band. And I knew that that would involve a lot more physical, physical activity. So that's what I expected. Um, so I started at this high school and I remember one year I was running laps. Uh, I think this is my sophomore year of high school, junior year. And I got the second lap through and I always had to walk these, um, but I just started getting tunnel vision and I just wanted to finish. Everyone else was done. I was the last one to finish. I was always the last one to finish. So I just wanted to get it done, get it over with. So I remember closing my eyes and waking up on the ground. Um, and what really happened was here's the edge of the track. Here's my foot. Uh, I guess as I closed my eyes and I got closer to the edge, I didn't see it and my foot hit and twisted this way. So I actually fractured uh, one of the bones in my, near my ankle, right above the growth plate. Uh, so fun times. Uh, I didn't think it was connected to anything. Didn't really think much about it. I just thought, oh, I'm stupid. I closed my eyes. Looking back, I think I passed out based on some things that are gonna happen later in the story. Uh, so fast forward, I ended up going to college to be a music ed major. Um, my freshman year, I have a roommate who's a little bit more health conscious. Uh, I wasn't really familiar with diets. I tried a juice cleanse in high school and it was it was the worst decision of my life. It, I'm just kidding, but it was really bad. <laughs> uh, it was dumb. I'll just put it that way. I definitely binge ate afterwards. Uh, terrible, terrible choice. Um, that's where I learned to hate cilantro. So uh, anyway, not that that's the point. Sorry, my phone cut me off. I am out of storage apparently. So uh, I'm trying to get my train of thought back on track. Okay. What was I talking about? Um, so yeah, high school passed out on the track, later learned that it had a lot more to do with my weight and my health um, than I knew at the time. I had also started seeing specialists, uh, rheumatologists and stuff because I experienced a lot of chronic fatigue. Um, I had rashes everywhere. Um, I was sleeping like 14 hours a day in the summers. Um, it was not, not a good time. So uh, they started exploring the possibility of me having lupus. I had a lot of inflammation markers in my blood work. Um, I was also pre-diabetic in high school. So it was rough. Um, moving on into college though, sophomore year of college is when I started learning more about weight loss specifically and where I decided that for myself, nobody else's expectations that I wanted to lose weight. And I started off by learning about um, 
total daily energy expenditure and stuff from YouTube, I started tracking calories um, like crazy on my fitness pal. Now, um, it probably works for a lot of people, I'm sure. But for me, it definitely caused me to develop some disordered eating habits. Um, I was flex dieting, so what I didn't know is that my autoimmune diseases were partially triggered probably by a lot of the foods that I was consuming, and I didn't know that at the time. I uh, wasn't really explained that by any doctors, so I continued to eat garbage um, and further agitate my inflammation. Uh, so flex dieting really didn't work for me. I had digestive issues. Um, I was tracking calories. Yes, I was losing weight. Yes, in the, in the sense of losing weight, it worked, but in the sense of having a healthy lifestyle and being truly healthy from the inside out, flex dieting just did not work. Not for me. Um, so I'm not saying that it doesn't create weight loss. I'm sure that it does. It did for me. I did lose a significant amount of weight flex dieting, uh, but I wasn't getting nutrients. I was eating a lot of junk food um, and just trying to keep it under a calorie goal. And eventually it got to the point where I was over exercising and I was also trying to get my calories as low as I possibly could during the day. Uh, so my goal was to like hit 800 calories and then to do an hour of cardio, uh, lift for an hour and then maybe go to Zumba and then I'd take 20 steps around campus to get to class all day. So I was burning so much energy and hardly feeding my body. And eventually I started developing a lot more autoimmune symptoms. Um, and I started developing issues with my heart, um, partially because I was also taking fat burners. Um, I was taking a pre-workout called cardio cuts and it caused an increase in your heart rate to help you burn fat easier. So I was taking that like twice a day. Um, and I remember just feeling so sick to my stomach after I take it and go work out. Um, so I had no appetite either. And that was part of the problem. And um, I was still drinking coffee and energy drinks. Like this was college, we were staying up super late, wasn't sleeping well at all. Uh, so just a lot of red flags there, just not a good experience. Um, but yeah, I did lose a significant amount of weight. I think I lost like 50 pounds. Um, for me, that was exciting. I think the lowest I got down to is 174 pounds. Um, I think the real driving force though behind my why back then was to appeal to the opposite sex. Um, I never dated, never had a boyfriend, um, got rejected so much that I just wanted to be attractive. And I felt like the only way that I could be attractive was to be skinny. Um, and I didn't really have any regard for my health at all. Uh, I was very, very depressed. Um, I still got rejected constantly. And so I put all of my worth into that. And I realized that the weight loss wasn't really driven by health or a, a want for me. It was for other people. And so that was one of the big major fallbacks. One of the lessons, really big lessons I took away from this journey. Um, so, I ended up yo-yoing, obviously. I would super restrict, over-exercise, and then go on to a binge episode for weeks at a time, be out of the gym for a few months, um, and then restrict again. And this literally happened for years. And I'm baffled at my thyroid and my metabolism functions to this day. I like destroyed my body. I am, I'm baffled at what I did to myself. Um, to me, it was almost a suicide mission. Um, but fast forward, uh, I graduated college and I ended up getting my first job in a small town. Uh, I was really kind of watching a lot of weight loss influencers get into bodybuilding at that time. And as a kid, I remember seeing bodybuilders on TV and thinking, that's so cool. Like, I would love to be strong like that. Uh, but, you know, as a being a former obese kid, I didn't ever see that in my future, but I thought it was cool. Um, but when I started seeing all these people, weight loss influencers getting into the bodybuilding thing, I was like, maybe there's a chance, like they have loose skin and they're still stepping on stage. Like there's a chance that I can also do that. And I really enjoyed weightlifting as it was. Like that was my favorite form of exercise, but I thought that cardio was the only way to go. So I overdid the cardio, I hated it. So I hated being in the gym. Um, I didn't find what I really loved. Um, and I didn't think that weightlifting was as important for me because I needed to lose weight first anyway, or so I thought. Um, so that's where I moved to the small town, get my first teaching job. Uh, and I joined the only gym that's really in that town. The only real like highly equipped gym was Planet Fitness. Um, and I met a trainer there and I mentioned to her that I was interested in bodybuilding. Uh, didn't know much about it as far as 
women's bodybuilding goes. I uh, didn't know what categories there were, but that I was always really interested in it. Even as a kid, I admired them, but I didn't think that I had a place in the sport because of my history with weight. And she assured me that everyone does and that she um, felt like I had the somo type, the body type genetics to put on muscle easily. Um, I think we were aiming for either bikini or figure, I can't remember, but we were gonna do an OCB Federation competition. And it was supposed to be for May, 2020. Um, we all know what happens. <laughs> but unfortunately I ended up moving. Uh, we got the ball rolling. I lost like 20 pounds with her. It was great. I learned a lot about exercises. I'm sure I put on quite a bit of lean mass. I think that's probably where I put on most of my muscle mass. Um, prior to this year. Um, I was definitely sore all the time. Uh, I actually healed my relationship with food that year um, a little bit better than I had in the past. So this time I knew that food was needed to fuel my muscles, to help me grow and to attain the goals that I had, I had to eat and I had to eat healthy. Um, so I learned to use food as fuel for the first time instead of punishing myself with it. Uh, so that was something that good that came out of that experience, but um, I ended up landing a job closer to my family and so we moved an hour and 45 minutes back to my hometown and um, In the process of moving I got stressed out and I started binging again And it's probably one of the worst binges I had had in years. Um, I was eating fast food like three times a day. It was disgusting um, Yeah, I ended up exhausted at drinking like three monsters a day just to pack and get stuff done. Um, we moved back and then a couple months I try to start back up at a new gym. I hire a personal trainer, it's going well, and then finances hit. I uh, had to fire the personal trainer and we ended up moving in with family um, to get back up on our feet. And in that process we moved in with family around January 2020. In um, February I decided that I wanted to seek professional help. Uh, I had tried personal trainers, um, I had a little bit of success, and we got cut off again. So a lot of the personal trainers that I worked with um, didn't go over nutrition very much, uh, which makes sense because a lot of them are not certified in that area and they don't want to overstep their boundaries. Uh, so I learned that through my courses. So uh, I didn't really get as much knowledge as I really needed with nutrition, and I just kept tracking on my fitness pal and falling back into the same trap. Um, so, in February, uh, my husband and I uh, knew a functional doctor in town. My mom and my dad knew very well, um, and we decided that we wanted to go to one of their health talks. So we went. So we ended up signing up with them. Uh, our first appointment was supposed to be in March, but we all know March 2020 is when the world kind of went upside down. Uh, so we pushed our date back to May. Um, I was sitting at 225 pounds when we first started. Um, my highest weight was 250 pounds my freshman year of college. Um, so they really helped us get everything on track. They put me on a low inflammatory lifestyle. Um, we did some blood work. Uh, my insulin resistance score was horrible. Uh, I also had some antibodies for Hashimoto's. So I'm um, not for sure that it had fully manifested or anything, but I definitely had the symptoms for it. Uh, I had receding hairline, which I didn't notice was as bad as it was until actually today. Um, and all of those little hairs are growing back. But over the past year, um, I've been eating primarily whole foods. So uh, no GMOs, uh, no processed foods, no sugar, no gluten, uh, very minimal dairy. If I do have dairy, it's like, 0% sugar-free plain Greek yogurt. That's like the max that I do. It doesn't bother my stomach. Um, for me, that lifestyle is perfect. Um, I know some people think that that's too extreme, uh, but when you deal with severe digestive issues and autoimmune diseases, it's best to play it safe. And for me, it's satisfying. I learned how to cook the foods that I'm eating. Um, I do eat high healthy fats. Um, I wouldn't say we eat a whole lot of red meat fats or uh, obviously no you know, hydrogenized oils or anything like that. So the fats that we do consume are healthy fats, a lot of avocados, nuts, seeds, uh, fish, eggs, those kinds of fats. Um, so that made a huge difference. I didn't track any calories this time. Um, he advised against that for now. I just ate healthy. I ate within, um, I think a 10 hour time frame just to help kind of keep overeating subdued um, 
and then I started doing cardio at first. So it took me about a month and a half, two months to really get into the lifestyle though. The first month and a half, I definitely cheated constantly, had trouble sticking to it, didn't quite understand what foods were and weren't allowed um, until I started asking tons of questions. Uh, during this process, I started getting back into the gym once I opened up and really started training uh, bodybuilding style again. So really wanted to build muscle, uh, ended up by November or December uh, losing 65 pounds of fat and adding about six or seven pounds of lean muscle mass. Um, so it was a pretty huge accomplishment. And then that's the period where I started to hire a coach uh, in January to help me get ready for stage in November. Um, so I think I was about 10 pounds heavier than I am now. So the goal was to step on stage in November and figure um, in the NPC Federation this time. But uh, I just didn't feel ready. We went through some more financial struggles and we decided that kind of had to cut the coaching for now. Um, and with the meal plan that you need to follow for bodybuilding, I just felt like it was triggering some past habits. Um, nothing against coaches or anything, um, nothing personal at all, but I just knew that I needed to take care of my relationship with food. Um, I was feeling guilty about eating healthy foods uh, that were on plan and I had temptations to go off plan too often. And so I figured now is probably not a good time. I probably jumped in too soon after, you know, only spending six or seven months really healing my relationship with food, it was too soon to jump into something that extreme. But I still plan on stepping on stage. Uh, the goal is May 2022. I'm not committed to a date because we all know things happen, uh, especially in the world of bodybuilding. But um, I'm hoping to get down to around 18 to 20 percent body fat and then start thinking about setting a, a date um, and then continue to build as long as I can and then start cutting down for stage. So I really am excited to take you guys with me. Um, I'll start uploading some vlogs, some gym vlogs, some daily vlogs um, leading up to May 2022, hopefully. Uh, worst case scenario, it'll be November 2022. Um, but I'm eager to get into this world of bodybuilding. Uh, I'm excited. This is a huge passion of mine. I love it. Um, and I'm convinced that I can do it on a paleo-based whole foods lifestyle. Um, I don't eat grains. I get most of my carbs and stuff from plants like potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, quinoa, other vegetable, like colorful vegetables. Um, and then I get plenty of protein really easily. I eat a lot of fish and chicken specifically. Sometimes I'll have some lean ground beef, grass-fed beef, um, but I eat a very paleo-ish lifestyle. I don't like putting names to it because it sounds like a diet. Um, it's definitely a lifestyle at this point. This is the longest I've stuck with a lifestyle and the healthiest relationship I've ever had with food um, and exercise at that too. So I know that my what my food does for me. I know what nutrients are in my food. I know I get my omegas from my fish, sometimes iron from those. You get your vegetables and you get your different vitamins, water soluble, fat soluble vitamins and uh, the different benefits come from pretty much everything that I eat and I know how it's going to fuel my goals in bodybuilding and my health overall. Um, so just a whole different outlook on life this year, this round, nothing like it used to be. So eating and losing weight for your health <laughs> is much different. So definitely have a very healthy relationship with food now. It's, I enjoy it enjoy the taste of the healthy food that I eat. Um, I make it delicious. I find ways to cook and I'll take you guys along with me when I cook sometimes and show you guys what I put on my food, how I season it, how I get it just the right texture. Because I used to hate fish. I hated salmon. I hated spinach. I wouldn't eat anything unless it had hot Cheeto dust on it. So <laughs> going from somebody who's an extremely picky eater, we eat nothing but McDonald's and hot Cheetos to being somebody who cooks lemon zest salmon and tuna steaks and all this other stuff and covered in spinach and I just I had to learn how to cook it but once I learned how to cook it and I learned the value behind it my taste buds eventually adjusted and I just enjoy it more and I know that it's working for my body um, to this day health wise um, all my inflammation markers are gone um, I am no longer insulin resistant I have optimal insulin scores uh, so no type 2 diabetes for me. Um, all of my autoimmune rashes are gone. If they were here, you would see them because they usually come up here. 
the uh, butterfly rash is gone. Psoriasis is gone. Used to be right here. You can see kind of where the scar, the outline was. Um, fatigue is gone. Guess who doesn't have to take naps anymore? This girl. <laughs> uh, still training really hard. Um, I kind of am developing my own training program right now with the help of my doctors uh, who also work out regularly. So that's been awesome. I became a certified personal trainer. So life is great right now. Uh, thank you guys for listening. I'm hoping that with this channel I can inspire somebody. Um, I know a lot of it's going to be my fitness journey at the moment, but I will be sharing recipes and talking about the weight loss aspect and what you can expect and kind of answering questions and talking about um, how we overcame some of the battles that come with losing weight. Um, but biggest difference, this was for my health. 100% I was in the trenches with my health last year, um, autoimmune diseases, pre-diabetic in the midst of a global pandemic. Um, I was not feeling well. I was dragging my feet all last year. You can ask all of my coworkers. It was at 25, I should not have had that quality of life. Um, so this was definitely health-based and the loss in body fat was merely just a symptom of my lifestyle. So I get a lot more sleep now, by the way, so that's great. But yeah, I think that's all I have to share today. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, stay on the lookout. I will be uploading my first vlog. I do have some vlog footage. Uh, I'll take you guys through one of my posterior leg days, which are going to be super fun.